You know, many people have been executed in Canadian history for various uh, crimes, be it passion, be it robbery, be it uh, serial killers, whatever. But this case is kind of interesting because he became kind of a folk hero, uh, not for his crimes, but for his escapes. Uh, and Ernest Cashel, who was an American-born outlaw, eventually became famous in Western Canada again for his repeated escapes from custody. We're going to go over a little bit of the case. Now, Ernest Cashel, born Nebraska, 1882, uh, allegedly was 14 when he left home and ran quickly afoul of the law. He was eventually arrested and sent to jail twice, and both times <coughs> he escaped. Now, now a fugitive in the States, he crossed from Wyoming through Montana into Alberta and worked as a ranch hand at several locations. On October 14, 1902, he was arrested and charged with forgery for passing a bad check. Now, while being transported by train under guard, he escaped out of the window of the train's uh, bathroom. A posse was formed by the Northwest Mounted Police, but Cashel eluded him. Now, several weeks later, November 19th, a man called upon police to report his brother-in-law, Isaac Rufus Belt, had gone missing from his ranch east of Lacombe. Upon investigation by the authorities, it was discovered that a young man named Bert Ellsworth had been staying at Belt's ranch at the time of the latter's disappearance. Now, from descriptions given of Ellsworth, police determined that he was Cashel, living under an alias, and began to hunt for him. He was discovered at a camp on the outskirts of Calgary, wearing Belt's clothing, and had in possession several of Belt's uh, possessions, including a $50 American gold certificate. Now, Cashel was arrested for horse theft, as no body had been found that would allow for a charge of murder. He was sentenced to three years in prison for the thefts. On July 20th, 1903, a farmer discovered Belt's decomposing body in a river. Examination showed he had died from a gunshot to the chest, with the bullet found being the same type and caliber as the rifle Cashel carried. Cashel was eventually brought from Stony Mountain Penitentiary back to Calgary to face murder charges in the death of Belt. The trial began October 19th and lasted until October 27th, at which time Cashel was found guilty and sentenced to hang. Now, the execution date was set for December 15th, and because of his history of escaping, he was held in a specially built cell, which kept him separate from the other inmates, and was itself set in one corner of a large room where he could be seen by everyone. The, guy, the gallows where Cashel was to hang was also visible outside the window. Now, Cashel's brother John visited nearly every day, and on December 10th, he arrived as usual. Under the pretense of a tearful final farewell to his brother, indeed both men were openly weeping, John covertly handed two revolvers to Ernest, who, Ernest, who concealed them as John left the room. As the guard was being uh, charged for a change from the day shift to the night, he pulled both revolvers out and ordered three guards in a room to first disarm themselves and then to open his cell. He chained the guards up in his cell and left the building. Now John Cashel had left his brother Orsh to escape upon, but the arrival was spooked by Ernest's rapid approach and broke free, disappearing into the frozen night. Realizing that the cold required him to find shelter quickly, he visited a female acquaintance in Calgary and demanded she hide him for the night. The pursuing Mounties also released that Cashel would have to find shelter quickly and began to search known underworld hangouts. The next day, the horse that had been ready for Cashel's escape was found. John Cashel confessed to his role in the escape of his brother, and he would later be sentenced to two years in jail, while the three guards involved were fired for dereliction of duty. One Mountie called Cashel's escape the greatest blow the Mounties had received in all their experience. Now, a massive manhunt followed the escape. Reports of sightings of Cashel flowed in from all over Alberta. They were mostly turn him in a, turned out to be false leads, although Cashel was actually seen in Calgary around Christmas time. Eventually, the need for food and shelter had Cashel breaking into homes and forcing the occupants to give him food and clothing. These reports helped the Mounties track his movements, and it was later learned that Cashel had been keeping track of his own pursuit by following the papers and indeed had never been more than six miles from Calgary during his run. Now, the police eventually received a tip on January 24, 1904, that he was hiding in the cellar of a farmhouse outside of Calgary. A large force was uh, dispatched to apprehend him. Along the way, he searched every structure they came upon, 
before discovering a haystack in the vicinity of the farmhouse that had been hollowed out with a small living place uh, within. Convinced they were close, a portion of the squad began to search the farmhouse. One officer started to descend to the cellar when a gunshot rang out from below. As the officer backed from the cellar, Cashel pursued and a brief exchange of gunfire was had, during which neither man was hit. Finally, Cashel was hit in the foot and retreated back into Farmhouse's cellar. Now, the main body of the police, alerted to Cashel's presence, quickly surrounded the farmhouse. The inspector in charge decided to burn the house to force Cashel out. As the fire was lit, he called out he was going to kill himself, and indeed a single gunshot was heard moments later. The police proceeded with the fire regardless, and soon Cashel called out again that he would surrender if he was promised not to be shot. That this much was agreed to, and Cashel threw his guns out and surrendered to the Mounties. Now he's eventually taken to custody and transported back to the same cell that he escaped from some 45 days prior. Along the way, he told police that he was completely aware of, at all times of their actions and could have escaped back to the States at any time, but stayed near Calgary in hopes of rescuing his brother. He was immediately taken before the court, and a new execution date was set for nine days uh, later. Now, Cashel was eventually hanged on February 2nd, 1904, at the Northwest Mounted Police uh, Barracks in Calgary. He was buried in an unmarked grave in the Potter's Field section of Calgary's Union Cemetery. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this goes to show that the old adage, which uh, increased from here, the Mounties always got their man. The, uh, the Cashel case became legendary on both sides of the border because, as we know, the Canadian policing system only became focused when the, the, the mounted police were uh, created because of the real situation. But there was some talk of a big screen movie being done about this, but if you watch some of the, uh, the westerns from back in the day, they stole, many writers have stole from this case. And it's kind of bizarre, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, I've traveled through Montana uh, back in the day, the late 1990s, and even the modern-day Montanians or Montonians know about the case because, uh, you know, uh, when your brother gets you out by just passing your guns, you know, you become legendary. And again, he became a folk hero, but, you know, uh, a dirty way to become a folk hero. So this is uh, the latest in our uh, uh, true crime podcast we've done on our channel. I do them on and off here, not to uh, exploit the cases, but just for information uh, for the public. If you like what we're doing here, please check out our uh, archives on the various cases. And uh, I'm uh, anti-execution uh, from day one. But the fact is, this was the, the law of the books at the time, so I'm not uh, judging or preaching whatever was right or wrong. It, it what was done, and they felt it was needed, and uh, that's where it stops. Have a good day. Bye.